Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Tech with Alan Billings. Today we're talking about the Kindle Fire. Are you a lover or are you a hater? The Kindle Fire. The myth and the legend. Now, the Kindle Fire is going for a magical only $199, magical $200, and is expected to ship within two to three days. It's coming out in a few days. So, and it has, the Kindle Fire has, has some amazing reviews. People are saying, oh, we know we like the Kindle Fire because people have liked the Kindle. But the Kindle Fire is a lot more than the Kindle for people who don't know. Kindle Fire is going to be basically like an iPad, but for less money. The, but at the same time, not at all. The Kindle Fire only has some of the apps that the iPad does actually consume. It doesn't have all the apps, and it does have a full integrated web browser. And you can, I believe it has a full integrated web browser, and it has an email as well. So you can check your email on your Kindle, and your Kindle, which you can partially do now. Your regular Kindle has a browser. It's not a full browser. It's not any means by any good browser. It's a really crap browser. And what they consider in beta for people that are using the first Kindle all the way up to the Kindle Touch and the Kindle Touch 3G. So there's some amazing stuff over here and let me just show you what the iPad price is. The iPad price is $500. $500 for an iPad 2 and that is ridiculous because who would ever want to pay that much for an iPad 2? That, that's that's terrible. So, uh, But with this being 199 it's like okay well I'm getting less apps but for more money. So you can't go and do Skype. I don't think they have a Skype app out yet. But the real question is, is the market going to grow? The just like the Android market grew and the Apple market grew, is there going to be a, a Kindle market? Is the Kindle app market going to grow to an exponential amount where people are going to really want to put their apps on a Kindle? Most likely, yes, because it again, it's only 199. So, who wouldn't want to do that? I think you'd be I think you'd, and I, I just don't think you'd be smart not to transfer your program uh, or your app over to the Kindle. It, it, it's genius. Everyone's going to want to buy a Kindle, especially for the older generation, because there are there's still people that only want like to write a, uh, uh, read books. Now at the same time, it's going to have a keyboard. Uh, from stuff that I was been hearing from Late Night Tech on Twit.tv, that some people, uh, one guy was saying that. There's not going to be, you can't, there's going to be a micro USB, but you can't add a keyboard into it. And, of course, the older people want to use an actual keyboard instead of using the touchscreen keyboard, because some people just don't like the touchscreen keyboard. But I do agree. The iPad has keyboards. Why can't the Kindle? The Kindle, I think, since this is, again, every product has its downs when it first comes out, but... I think the uh, the Kindle Fire is going to be a great product. At the same time, I think the Kindle 2 will be even better, whatever they consider the Kindle 2. But I think when the Kindle 2 comes out, it will be awesome, and it will have a lot more extensions. I do not know the upgrade process of the iOS, uh, of what the uh, OS is going to be upgraded as. So I don't know if the uh, operating system is going to be upgradable, if you're going to have to pay for the upgrade or if the upgrade is just going to come free. I don't know anything about that. But I do know that it is $199 is amazing price and you can play Angry Birds. So that's all I'm happy about. Angry Birds, email, all that. I have a PC. I could be, I could run everything off my PC. I don't think you could do Skype because I don't think there's even a video camera in the Kindle Fire. There may be. I'll have to look. But... The, uh, for the price that you're going to pay, the 199 is amazing. If you ha if now, now this is a completely optional. If you want to go ahead and pay the, uh, f if you feel that you're going to really use this many apps, you go with the iPad too. It really doesn't matter to me. But I mean, for this product, it's and also this is only a seven inch display, and this only takes Wi-Fi. As far as I'm aware, they don't have a Kindle that's going to take 3G yet. As far as I'm aware, I don't know. I could I could be wrong about that, but I would like to see uh, one with a 3G if that would be possible. Because I mean, obviously, if you're gonna if you're gonna be doing all this stuff, you're gonna want 3G as well. 
Now this is I'm just scrolling through the page right here and some of the features and you know like that now they're always gonna say this stuff like t stunning color touchscreen. Whoa, I mean yeah it's it, I mean it's a really I I really like the interface the UI of it the uh, user interface and I think it looks really nice the uh, scrolling and the touch as you can see here I think it looks really good the video display looks really good. Now they say that it's a fast dual core processor and you know something I really don't know as far as how fast the processor will really go. I don't know what, uh, how much consume, how much the uh, operating system consumes for use of that between books and all the other apps. So I can't really say if it's going to be fast enough. They, according to them, it's fast with the dual core processor, which normally is fast enough for most uh, pad devices, most uh, tablets. Dual core is fine. I don't think anyone needs more than a dual core. Some of them are trying to coming out with tri cores, and they're like, "Oh yeah, they're majorly fast." Now, again, uh, interesting. I don't know if the the uh, magazine and rich color came out. Uh, not r just magazine in general. I don't know if that came out for the iPhone, the iPhone, uh, iPhone and iPod, uh, the iOS five that was upgraded. I don't know if that came out with the newsletter thing because of the Kindle. I don't know if Apple looked at that and said, oh, they're coming out with that. We got to come out with that. And I don't know if that was a big controversy about that or if what was the decision being made on that. But I definitely think it was because they saw that they were making it, that Amazon was going to make this Kindle that obviously you can already read the magazines on there, but all of a sudden the Kindle Fire is going to be this huge thing. And now it's actually become a threat. The Kindle was not as big of a threat to Apple before because it was just a reader. Now that it's stepped into tablet territory, it stepped into what Apple considers their territory. And now that they're in their territory, it's like dogs against dogs. You know, it's terrible. And they're going to be like, oh, well, you, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I see a huge problems in the line here and a lot of competition. Now, again, the Kindle Fire is not fully and not by any means complete. I mean, I, as I recommend to everyone, don't always buy the first product that you see. It's okay for me. It's okay for me to buy the first product I see because the first product I see, I'm going to test out. That's the reason I'm buying. I'm buying it to test to tell you guys. But if you're using this as a regular device, don't buy the first one you see. The uh, Just like the iPhone, the first iPhone that came out, everyone was lining up. There was lines that were miles away just to buy the iPhone 4. I mean, the, the iPhone, just the iPhone 1 in general, and everyone was like, oh my god, and now, then they were like, oh my god, it sucks. So, buying the first product, even though it might seem like amazing, it may not always be amazing. So, I recommend trying the uh, Kindle Touch. Try, if you're a uh, first-time user of the Kindle, and you're not sure if you want to buy it or not, I suggest buying the Kindle Touch. Uh, and then, if you want to read and stuff like that, because the Kindle Touch can only do reading, I, I'm, as far as I'm aware. And I recommend the Kindle Touch, and then wait and see what people are saying about the Kindle Fire when the Kindle Fire 2 comes out. And then if you like it, if you hear good reviews and stuff like that from other people, then or from me, you can always just go and buy the Kindle Fire 2. I mean, I, I just don't like buying technology that's first. I mean, if it's the first brand, it's not usually good. There's always room. There's always this huge error especially with Microsoft products. So um, go ahead if you want to. You could spend the uh, $199 on this, or you could go ahead and go to the iPad. You could choose any. Uh, you, there's also Android. I haven't, I, I'm sorry, I have not been looking at the Android devices. But uh, yes, there's also Android devices, which are cheaper as well, because the Android is an open source platform. So the uh, operating system is much cheaper. But definitely uh, recommend you check out the uh, Kindle Fire, because it's, I mean, it's going to be good, but I recommend you don't buy it. <laughs> so at the same time, I'm telling you, hey, go ahead, buy it, but uh, don't buy it at the same time. So it's ridiculous that I'm even saying this, and I'm like, whoa, there's the iPad too. And then it's like, but Alan, make up your mind. What do you want us to buy? And I don't know. I don't know. I have to say that the iPad too has, is incredible. I've tested it out and seen it. And it's it's better than the iPad 1, but I mean, it's incredible stuff. And the uh, user interface is incredible and everything. And I don't know anything about the Kindle Fire, so I can't exactly say 
that I don't know. I can't say that I know anything about the UI in Kindle Fire. So it's like, I don't know how it's going to go. Uh, I would have to say that the Kindle Fire is going to be like the iPad. But it may be slow. It may not. So I like I'm saying, wait until it comes out wait for some other people to buy it. And then you could buy it. So take that into consideration. I mean, there's uh, there's always more opportunities. There's more always. Uh, you can always wait for it. You can always just get the. You can always just get a tablet, a slower tablet. That is an Android device. And you can use that. But either way, uh, check the Kindle out, the Kindle Fire, the Kindle Touch, Kindle Touch 3D, 3G, and the Kindle with the keyboard. So you can check all those out. On Amazon.com, the Kindle Fire is again 199. It's going to be, uh, I think, exp uh, it's either ready to ship now, or it's coming out in a couple days. But anyway, check out the uh, Kindle Fire, and I will see you guys in the next video. Today we're talking about the Kindle Fire, sold by Amazon.com. Now. Basically, the question that's on everyone's mind is, do I want a Kindle Fire or do I want an iPad? I don't want to spend a lot of money, but at the same time, I want a tablet. I was thinking, you know, some people go, oh, well, I'm thinking about Android. Android might be the best. And I have to kind of differ on that. Android tablets are not always the best to be used. But some people are saying, well, maybe I want to go with the Fire. Because it's only being sold for $199, $200. And, and you know, they're like, well, maybe I'll get my, you know, maybe I'll get my grandson or granddaughter a, a tablet. And it's only $199. Who could argue with that? But. At the same time, people are like, well, what is – not too many people know what the Kindle Fire is. They know that it's similar to the iPad. But what a lot of people think is, is it actually the iPad? And it's not actually the iPad. Not yet anyway because it's not progressed enough. It does, It's not matured. It's not even out in the market yet. And not – well, in, okay, not for long. It hasn't been out for long, if anything. A couple people might have it. But it hasn't been out in the market for very long. So it hasn't had that much time to mature. Just like any new product that comes out in the market. It's going to have its error. It's going to have its problems. Some people are talking about, well, I can't integrate a keyboard into it. I have to use the on-screen keyboard. I don't like that. It comes with a micro USB port, but you cannot do plug your keyboard into it. You can't plug a keyboard into a micro USB port. The micro USB port is only to connect your computer to use almost as like an external hard drive. So, or put Adobe, uh, put Adobe Reader files on there, uh, or stuff like that. You know, put uh, stories and books on there using our computer. So a lot of people don't know exactly what they want to get. They're people for Christmas because they don't know about the product. And to tell you the truth, I don't know too much about the Kindle either. The Kindle Fire is something completely new to everyone. So that's why I want to take a look at this. And again, it's uh, not one nine nine two hundred dollars. For the uh, in, for the Kindle Fire, uh, it says expected to ship within two to three days. I'm pretty sure it's out right now. Now it says with the current hard drive size that's in there. Of course, it's not telling me. 18 million movies can hold up to 18 million movies, TV shows, songs, magazines, and books. I find that hard to believe because it can only hold up to 18 million of something. <laughs> Cannot hold 18 million of everything, but uh, skipping what will people say, you know, we could just go over it. You know, if the five gi uh, fire gives me features that I want to want at the price point that less. Okay, that's less. That is half of the iPad 2. Now, of course, it is half of the price of the iPad 2. The iPad 2 is going for $500, $499. So, yeah, that's pretty expensive, but. As I've said, that the Kindle does not provide everything that the iPad 2 has. It doesn't have every app. It has apps like Angry Birds. It has some games and stuff like that. And yes, it has a touchscreen feature. But it's not the iPad 2. It's not. It does not have that mature... It doesn't have that kind of maturity to it. 
it's still going to have errors to it. It doesn't have the app market that Apple has, that Apple has grown over the several years. It doesn't have that. And, you know, I keep telling, I tell people all the time, don't buy the first thing that comes out. Buy, wait till the next product comes out. Wait till the two. Wait till the two. And it will be more matured. Now, it's gonna now it's gonna go. It's gonna tell me about it's stunning touch screen. So you know, I mean, the iPad two did that. You know, that's all they do. And it's gonna tell me that it's beautiful, simple, and easy to use display. I mean, how hard is it to uh, move your finger across the screen? And it talks about it, its fast dual core processor. I can't tell you that the dual core processor in this in this thing is fast or not because I don't know how much it takes up for memory. And I don't know how much it uses, so I don't know if a dual core is actually possible. What I can tell you is that if you do download all the apps that they have available right now, it's probably going to slow it down. Uh, the I don't know what the I also do not know what the feature is for the uh, notifications. Is there are notifications on there? What are the notifications? Are they pop up notifications like the iPad? Or the iPad 2? Can they give me a pop-up notification and say, Hey, you have this appointment this day. Is there an online calendar? Most likely not. Like I said, the the in, the market has not been improved yet to fully capable to be fully capable of holding apps like that. It might have one or two of them. I don't even know if Google's going to go in and say, You know what? We're going to put our apps on the Kindle market. I don't see why not. Google's very open like that. They, you know, but... Uh, I don't see why not, but definitely it hasn't had that market to mature, so I don't think it has that many apps. And even if you do, I don't think a dual core is going to hold that many apps that you want to put on there. Again, it's saying that it's going to hold 17 million songs, and it has all your favorite children's books. And yeah, it might have a lot of children's books. I do see this uh, being very big for schools, uh, especially considering the fact that it's a cheaper price. If it's a cheaper price, all schools really want is a simple device that they can use for stories, use for the school books, and I think for a $200 is pretty good. If they're going to buy the iPad, and the iPad is going to be totally worth it for magnet schools and schools that can afford it, totally. But I think uh, schools are also looking for a cheaper price because a lot of schools are doing budget cuts and all that right now so they're really looking for a cheaper price and i really think the kindle fire is really going to bring that out especially for schools just for just so they could do books and all that and i can cannot wait till the books start coming out on this on uh, the uh, kindle fire which uh, i think many of them have i don't know if you're going to be able to uh, download certain books or not because it does have a browser in it now it, do, it does say it has your favorite apps and games now um I don't know if you can exactly see it, but it has the Pandora. It has some games. It has Facebook and all that Netflix. I'm not surprised Netflix. I'm not really surprised that Netflix didn't grab the opportunity to get this. It has Words with Friends, even though Words with Friends is really kind of getting old. Uh, Planets vs. Zombies. I mean, it has a lot of popular games, but again, it shows all these apps that are in here. But again, it hasn't had that maturity market to have those amateur people that there, there are there are amateur things that are on the uh, the app store, and there's amateur apps. And some people like those amateur apps because they're not fully business incorporated apps, and they're just simple tools. Some people like that. I don't. And again, like I said, I don't know exactly what the full extent is to how much they are, how much their market is, and exactly how many apps they have. But they do say they have many apps, and they're like, oh, we have all your favorite apps and games. Well, that's just your top. What about the ones that people don't use that much? Are you really going to be interested in that? And how open is your market? Is your market going to be ridiculously expensive? That's something else we got to look at. Now, uh, this this caught my eye right here. The magazines. It says magazines rich color. Rich color. I don't give a crap about the rich color. But the uh, magazines caught my eye for the reason that why I was wondering why Apple decided to put out a magazine booth on their uh, iOS 5. And I think that has to do with the fact that they were like, hey, Kindle already does this. Kindle already has the magazine thing. And now they're going to not just prevent, not they're, not, they're not just presenting text now. 
they're going to present the entire magazine full color you know full color display we have to get this out there so i don't know if that is what prov uh told brought them to doing this or if that was they were like well we want to be or we want to beat Kindle before they come out with this. I have no idea. And I have no idea what went on behind the scenes or anything. But I definitely think this had something to do with the fact that they were like, hey, we got to get this out. We got to get this news, uh, this news magazine thing out. I just want to know, is it going to be cheaper? Which one is it going to be cheaper on? Is it going to be cheaper on Amazon, on the Kindle Fire? Or is it going to be cheaper on the iPod? That's going to be a big thing. That's going to be huge because no, not only would it be cheap to buy the product, but it would be cheap to buy the magazines to the product as well. Are the apps going to be cheaper? Because it's Amazon, most likely it's going to be cheaper. And it's going to prevent some of these places to go and say, oh, well, we have to lower our prices. A lot of places are not going to want to do that, especially Apple. Apple is known for being very – well, Microsoft is known for being very greedy, but – Apple is known for being super greedy. So I recommend that you check it out. Check out and see if you like the specs on this. You may like the specs on this better than the iPad too. It's all a decision between do you want to pay the 500 and or do you want to pay this cheaper price, the, what is it, $200? The $200 for the Kindle. You can, you can do either one. I mean, it's it's your choice if you want to do if you want to pay the two hundred or if you want to pay the uh, the five hundred. But and a lot of people are looking for cheaper prices, especially for Christmas, especially for their grandsons and granddaughters, uh, just kids in general. Maybe you're trying to buy one for your for your spouse or something like that. But either way you do it, it uh, uh it's coming down to price right now. And uh, and right now I see it as even though. It's not matured. A lot of people look past that, and a lot of people think, "Well, if everyone, else, if they're putting this out and they're really throwing this out there, then it must be a good product." So, I definitely recommend before you end up buying it for anyone, you check out the specs, see if they're gonna like it, see if this is what they do. It does have a fully, as far as I'm aware, fully integrated web browser. I don't know if it's compatible with everything. I don't know if it has Flash. It should have Flash. I don't see why it wouldn't have Flash. But um, it has definitely has Adobe Reader on it because it can do um, read magazines and stuff. But there's cer there are certain things that are not going to be on there that are going to be on the iPad too. Just like the different difference between the iPad two, just like the difference between the iPad market app market and the market with the um, Android market. And all and when the Windows tablet market and all that, so there's going to be a difference in apps, and a, there's going to be a lot of popular apps that are going to be on all platforms that are going to be on there as well, like your like Netflix and all that. And I think Netflix will actually be pretty popular on there as well because Netflix is like Top Gun right now when it comes to movies. And now that you can watch them on your Kindle and you could read, this is going to be huge. And not that, not just that, like I said, the price is going to be huge too because it's a lower price. So definitely check it out. It's only $200 and it's going to come with less stuff until it gets a little more mature. More opportunities. There's more, always, uh, you can always wait for it. You can always just get the, you can always just get a tablet, a slower tablet that is an Android device. And you can use that. But either way, uh, check the Kindle out, the Kindle Fire, the Kindle Touch, Kindle Touch 3D, 3G, and the Kindle with the keyboard. So you can check all those out on Amazon.com. The Kindle Fire is again 199. It's going to be, uh, I think, uh, it's either ready to ship now or it's coming out in a couple days. But anyway, check out the uh, Kindle Fire and. If you like what you saw today, you go ahead and give us a thumbs up or comment in the comment section below. You could always contact us at our email, letstalktech1 at gmail.com. Uh, send us an email, anything you want to talk about on the show, any sort of tech news or anything that's just curious on your mind. Or if you're trying to get something to work, you can't get something to work, you need help with your computer, you could always email us there at letstalktech1 at gmail.com. You can also visit our website, letstalktechshow.com, where all of our 
the links are to our news feeds, to our Facebook page, to our new Google Plus page, as well as our blogger feed, our anything that we have for feeds, anything that we have for social media websites, it's on the website. Go to letstalktechshow.com to check it out. My name is Alan Billings, and I am host of Let's Talk Tech Show News Online.